Hi, I'm Mark Clebourne. Welcome to the Photographer Academy. And we're in the studio photographing uh, some ideas for you for kind of building up your portfo uh, portfolio as well as kind of experimenting with some lighting. Um, we're going to be photographing, as you can see on screen now, uh, with just some great copper cut cutlery. And we're going to be creating three different types of photograph for you to kind of uh, mimic and sim simulate. Now, um, I'm using, as you can see behind here, just um, a highlight background uh, being used as a soft, a soft box. And uh, uh, basically, we've got three types of shot. One is going to be using, as you can see, the card now. Another is going to be using the table as like a kitchen top, kind of a day a daylighty, but still giving a kind of a fine art look. And then we're going to be looking uh, right at the start as the point of view. So in other words, looking from a child's eye or kind of from waist height into the product. Um, and that will basically give us uh, uh, three different types of look and feel to an image within a very, very short per uh, period of time. For the uh, flat, flat lay image, well, obviously, as you can see here, we're using the stu a studio stand, but you could be using your tripod or even held hand, handheld even. Um, and uh, again, that just gives us the ability to actually shoot from above down and keep it kind of perfectly flat uh, the whole time. There's nothing worse than something that is a slight angle, uh, kind of not kind of quite perpendicular, I think that's the right word with it, but um, hey-ho. Um, as far as the uh, lighting's concerned, we're just using the one light, as I mentioned. We're using a flag, a, a reflector, in fact, but this is the subtractive side. This is to hide and make the hi highlight smaller than it is in real life. Behind, we've just got a kind of a pop-up background to kind of give us the uh, kind of old mastery kind of plaster kind of peel or whatever it would be. Um, but as far as the kind of the um, tables concerned, this is just our studio table and we're just using some card as well. But really what you're going to see is uh, how to kind of add reflectiveness to metals to create yourself a variety of images that you can even image stack. So image stack is where we're bringing them into the likes of Photoshop and kind of using different parts of the same photograph just shot in a slightly different way as far as reflectancy or position of reflectors to kind of build a build up a, a different kind of look and feel to each or one of the actual pieces of cutlery itself. Uh, we're shooting uh, at f4 today, f5, 6, f8, it really doesn't matter. You just choose what is your depth of field. Um, for this kind of photography, we don't need a huge depth of field at all because obviously even in the flat lay and the POV, basically we are flat. So there's very, very little depth. If I was photographing the likes of a toaster, where it's got around about a eight inch kind of depth, then obviously I'd need to actually shoot, if we needed it all sharp, around about the F8, F, uh, F11, depends on the lens that we're gonna use. Enough from me, enjoy the film and kind of get out there, steal the cutlery uh, from your, uh, your house drawer, as it were, and get near a window, if nothing else, and start to take some photographs. Enjoy it. Um, I'm using the, uh, the 100 mil macro just to um, give me the ability to go in close, um, to get the shot even tighter. I've kind of allowed, let's have a quick look. You can see the kind of the test shot. I just increased the aperture there just a little bit. So you, you can see already now, uh, we've got a, a well kind of cleaned uh, fork spoon, uh, except the spoon is slight, uh, slightly moved uh, in its rotation. So I just want to turn it towards the light source just a touch more, making sure the verticals are vertical. Probably one of the biggest best friends in any commercial photography studio is kind of a blue tack or a putty to make sure things that are gonna pretty much keep in their position. Um, so you can see what that kind of one light does. It's, it's pretty good in fact, it's given us a good reflection throughout. We've got a nice kind of tone, the copper looks copper. I think we need to add in a little bit of light into the likes of the um, spoon. We'll have a little look now that in a minute, how it's gonna actually work. Um, what else am I gonna do? I think I'm just gonna, let's do the quick shot anyway to have a look. Um, focus is now switched off, so it means that it's fixed. As long as I don't hit the camera or hit the uh, kind of the uh, poly, 
um, then pretty much it's going to be sharp no matter what. Uh, remember, if you've got any questions, get them in at the end. So straight away already, I, I really like the kind of the look and feel that we've got going on. Let's just pop a big white reflector just below camera position just to see um, if that's going to add a bit of a change to the actual spoon. I like the way that it works now with the knife, in fact. It's kind of really kind of quite golden. And if I obviously put it above, that's going to kind of give us the, the kind of the same thing on the tip of the knife, yeah? Uh, it'll go from there. But al already we can see from just position that below, we're going to give ourselves a, a much kind of bigger, whiter light and bright and things really. So uh, I think we're almost there. I think we need a little bit more light on this side or this side, in fact, to actually help that spoon come alive. Uh, but I think the background is just a bit too bright. I'm glad I put this in ready just to actually uh, move it across to just start to get rid of some of that background light. So let's look at the background. We'll ignore the actual knife and spoon and fork for a minute. Um, just seeing how the difference is in the background. So straight away we can see it. It's, it's dulled itself down without any real work, uh, which is pretty good. Let's bring our white reflector back in just below the actual lens. Um, some, sometimes with very reflective surfaces, it's a good idea for us to actually have a, a full white tent at the front. Yeah, it's pretty good as such, really. Uh, Brandon, can you give me another big piece of card, please? Anything. I just want the white side. So let's just put this in, thanks, bud. Uh, just above the camera position again. And this can even come in closer and closer, as long as it's not going to be in the shot. You soon learn to uh, kind of get out of the way or look at the reflections and everything else. Yeah, pretty close there. So um, as far as the dark area, uh, dark area uh, where we're looking at the spoon, I think the spoon can slightly turn towards us. Um, so let me just grab some white cloth a minute. Um, I'm just using a normal kind of uh, soak up rag cloth, pretty much uh, just cost Costco and the likes of. Try and avoid things with lint in because they'll obviously leave um, kind of little bits behind. You are usually the cheaper the cloth, the better, in fact, uh, which is a bit of a joke. Let's all look again. So I kind of quite like that. I'm just going to look at the spoon for a minute to see if I want to actually blend the two images together. I really do want that little bit more white light on the actual spoon. But it might have to be from below, in fact. Okay, so it's better there. So what I might do is actually kind of uh, shoot it in three or four different ways and then basically paint the different reflected surfaces in. That's it, okay? So you can see it straight away. We're pretty much there with one light. Um, possibly then another uh, white light card just running on the right-hand side. So with that in mind now, now I've discovered that, let's uh, bend this. I usually go for um, cut it and then use it on gaffer. That allows you to kind of control the actual bend of the board as well. Um, we've got the silver reflective side, so we can actually choose one or both or the other. Let's get this in as close as we can. Let's now bring our white just below. Um, I'd usually kind of clamp this off just to make sure it's not going to fall on set. Uh, this will give us some idea on kind of how we could light very reflective products like frames or whatever it would be and really make a great three-dimensional uh, three image out of it. Let's do the same thing. Let's cover up a little bit more of here. Same thing again. Uh, I've gone from the POV point of view, so the point of view. So in other words, from kind of child eye. Give us the depth. That's better. Okay, so we're almost there. So I've got a darker background. I left enough kind of space running down the left-hand side for any text. Pretty much sharp there. Let me just move this across the side. I'm going to absolutely double check. Before I move anything else now, I really want to check focus, uh, which you'd usually check on a decent screen. Focus in, Mark. And switch off again. So just before I move anything, because this is just the first of a few shots, yeah? Let's do that now. Make sure that I haven't cut off the 
white. There we go, Brill. I'm just going to slightly turn that. I'm, I'm pushing it rather than turning it, yeah? I've covered over the lens again. Let's do it straight away. Idiot. We all make mistakes. And let's just pop this on closer as well. Yeah, it's pretty good. Like that a lot. Okay. So there's our kind of first shot. I'm glad we kind of pulled the background down in density. Um, obviously, we could uh, control even more of that light in spillage and so on if we were using kind of grids on lights. So there's our, our kind of first image. It looks pretty um, fine art anyway, a real kind of image. But let's say now the client wants um, uh, a lay flat image. Let's try and make it easy for ourselves. I chose the wood table again um, because it really does give, give me this almost kind of farming kitchen kind of uh, look and feel. Um, We'll also do exactly the same shot, I think, with the likes of a card, a colored card. Let's just go. So this is what we refer to as the flat, uh, flat lay. If you've seen food photography that I've done in the past, you'll know this now. Um, and basically all we're gonna do is turn the um, knife, spoon, spork, fork even. I was thinking of Toy Story then for a minute. So let's just go in here, let's make sure we've got no lint. So um, let's go for a kind of cropped off. In fact, I quite like the, um, oh, let's leave that there. Let's uh, try and focus in on this first. Um, the studio stand has a counterweight and it basically keeps it about an inch or so um, before the top point. So you often see me really have to push it up because technically the counterweight is already at the bottom of the stand and I just want that extra uh, inch or so. So a quick test before we do anything else. I haven't locked off the feet. We're not worried about the reflections or anything else. Like it. So spoon. Slight touch, and this is where I think working with the likes of a, a monitor um, really does work. Ignore the first one. Uh, I, I even quite like it with the cut-off bases, to be honest, but let's um, get a full knife fork spoon. I think for me, when I'm looking at this image now, it, it's, it's good, Let, let's do it. Um, let's not kind of fuss too much. Let's get some reflections going. So once more, let's go for our, our overhead and to kind of really get some of this lighting back in. So because the top part of the image is not really being used, we can kind of get some image reflection going on here. I am worried about me as a reflection, but you can see already how that knife just came alive. We can always darken down all the kind of the wood, no matter what, or we could use a very, very small light, light source. I still think that this spoon, in fact, is gonna need a little bit more uh, reflection. So I'm just gonna um, paint all, all of this in, in fact, so I can then choose and kind of add in some different reflections into the spoon as we go. That's probably one of my favorites so far, in fact, that really like, like it. Obviously, the background is a bit messy and everything else with it, but uh, pretty much uh, that's there. Let's do the same thing, but let's just make it a little bit more art, artsy. Um, let's crop off the bottom. Really wish there wasn't so many marks on this table. That's okay, let's do that. Fingers crossed it should focus. There you go. Switch that off. 
Let's just check again. Yeah, I think it needs to come up a little bit higher, a little bit more space. <laughs> I'm just choosing the focus point. Switch that off now. Okay, same thing. It definitely got that farmhouse um, kind of quality. I still think it needs a little bit more space. Almost going back to where we began, in fact. Um, so I'm just waiting for the beep beep to know it's in focus anyway. Now I think it's just moving. Now I like the space around it, but I don't like the, it's too much at the bottom of the stem. I want more space above. There, yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, I like that. Um, I do think, though, that this is a bit too much here. Uh, there's no need for that at all. So just because I do have a piece of polystyrene, uh, polystyrene. <laughs> it's there. Let's use it. That's pure luck that that was there, right? <laughs> but I'm just going to kind of diffuse that light in on there. It's pretty good. All right, so that's def it's definitely a got a shot. Let's just add in an extra little bit of that white light again. So let's go from above first. This would help if you're doing quite a lot of this shot and you found that you needed more of a whitening, um, cut a piece just wider than the lens so it basically just kind of fixes itself in place uh, uh, to actually be in the shot and things really. Once more, I think just that spoon needs that little bit of help. I like that. Yeah, pretty good. So I don't even mind the actual really hot light coming in from the left. It is just a bit too much though, to be honest. So that's where pretty much you'd want to color in this instead of a white reflector down at the bottom. You want that to be a, a blacker reflector kind of putting something in place there. Yeah, okay, so um, that's okay. We've got, two, we've got two shots straight away. Let's do a, thir a third shot with a bit of colored light. Colored card, I mean, sorry. So let's do exactly the same thing. Knife, fork, spoon. And let's go back to that little bit more of a... Oh, kind of pack shotty kind of thing. Dee, dee, dee. I can't get in close. Let me just uh, focus it first. Bring that down towards me. So, just because I can't get above to actually see it, I think this is where a flippy screen would really, really help me. I like that vignette that we've brought in already from the poly. This is just from the poly board, yeah? It's definitely going to need some help anyway. I want to kind of get that straight first and now let's bring in our reflective card i still think it needs a little bit more space in fact uh, to actually allow it to be a little bit more kind of composition i think this is more catalog I'm not a massive fan but i can use that to actually paint in some of the um, image from the actual fork itself let me just see what it's like again without. Take that away as well and we'll do shots. We've got the full green. Last one. Oh, no flash. Yeah, it's pretty good. I like that. I'm going to bring it over to the left just to allow a little bit more space running down the right. Pushing that spoon up a touch. Let's just add in a little bit of reflection from this, from this side now. I'm thinking that we're going to cut it out here. Yeah? Or it's going to be a square. 
we've always got the other green on the right to actually work. So straight away you can see how that goes. So if you imagine kind of blending that, that right right hand side together, and then you think about blending the top of the image. So if you needed to kind of take a little bit of each of the different um, uh, products, so you can actually start to really kind of put these together. A little bit of reflection onto the knife. I think that's what that's missing really. There you go. So I wouldn't be worried in today's Photoshop world of being able to actually stack and kind of build these images together. But yes, yeah, pretty good, like that. Um, and again, in the same, same way, what can you physically do? What is in your drawer? Uh, we've got a set, so if they were basically, you know, wad tin. Uh, we're gonna do another shot for Academy in a minute, which is all about spices. Um, but once more, let's choose the hard, hardest element. Let's take some of the lighting off, making sure they're all flat, which they are. Good, like that. Let's close it off. I had a little bit of light reflected. Add that lovely curve actually into the spoon, but I'm loving the handles on the other one, but I think the client would love that more. And let's just close this off more, just to um, really have a strip light. Let's take away the white first. It's a small light source now, of course. Oh, I love that. Let's add that little bit back in again. It's just kind of taking all that kind of top, top light away. Let's push that away more. So it starts to get some more mood. I'm, I'm preferring that now already. Liking that a lot, in fact. So let's just, once that's there, I think we need just a little bit of light on the spoons. And let's just add in that little bit of light on the under of the spoon. Yeah, nice. Remember, um, really what I need is one big shot and then I can start to actually paint in the little elements that I like from one thing to another. Um, and that's the way that you can obviously kind of really control things quite quickly in the likes of build, building or stacking images. Um, if you run into scripts in Photoshop, it kind of says uh, load files into layers. So straight away, as long as you haven't moved this, you can choose the five or six different images and then obviously apply a mask to each one and you can start to paint the things in and out if you so wish. So remember, we usually kind of have a black mask and then obviously start to reveal. So black hides, white reveals in the same as the paint. The, uh, if you've got a black mask, you need white, white paint to start to actually kind of reveal. And then obviously if you've got a white mask, which so shows every, every, everything you want black to actually hide.